Hello, hello friends. This is Grace here at The Comfy Nest with Grace, live here on the Essential Stencil Facebook page. We're gonna do some crafty crafting tonight. Um, I'm just gonna grab this feed, make sure it's working. We'll give away three sets of stencils tonight during the live broadcast. So please make sure that you say hello so that we know that you're here. Um, say hello, tell us what your weather's like, where you're coming in from, are you crafting tonight? Are you sitting back with a hot cup of tea? What are you up to? Tell us what you're up to. Um, just let me grab this here. I'll be right with you. I'm going to be working on a Dollar Tree mason jar tonight. This is one of those wood kettles from Dollar Tree. I'm going to work on that. And I'm going to be working with this Faith 3-pack. It's a 3-pack. And it has some sweet phrases with it. Um, one of them is Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. And it is well with my soul. And that's the one I'm going to use. This is the one I'm going to use tonight. So let's get rolling. It's time for some crafty goodness. <laughs> Everybody ready to craft? Who's crafting tonight? If you're crafting, comment and let me know. Hi, Kathy. Hello, hello. Let me know if you're crafting tonight. All right, here, I think I finally found it. I just have to get the comments up and we're good to go. Yay. Okay, if the comments are in your way, I'm going to put the camera down so you can see the project. If the comments get in your way, um, just make sure on your phone or tablet that you swipe them off to the right. I think on my phone, if I swipe to the right, the comments will go away and then I can see the project. So if the... If the comments are in your way, make sure you do that. So I'm going to do that right now. Here's what I'm working on. So what I did, I want to redesign this. And of course, sometimes, gosh, Dollar Tree has such cute little, <laughs> they really do have such cute little projects. Um, sometimes I just do it on the back. But if you want to cover this up, it has some texture, it has some glitter, and it, that is a little challenging to sand off. So what I did was I took my big mixed media book. This one's my 11 by 14. I took a sheet out of my mixed media pad and I cut out a shape of my jar so that I'll be able to glue this on top of here. So that's what I'm gonna do by the end of the night. But for now, this is what we're working with. So let me check the comments. Hi, Tammy in Minnesota. I'm in North Dakota. How fun is that? Connie is in Ohio. Thank you for sprinkling. What she means by sprinkling is she hit that share button. <laughs> so hitting the share button basically means that she sprinkled. So thank you to all of you doing that. Hey, Annette, Louisiana. She says, woohoo, catching you live. Carolyn says, it's a little late for me, but I'm crafting. Wait, I lost your comment. Crafting tonight, but ready to go in the morning. Not oh, a little late for me to be crafting tonight, but I'll be going, going in the morning. Good for you. Hi, Vivian. Hello, Judy and Cindy and Michelle. Ooh, Michelle's taking a break from Valentine's crafting. Fun, fun. Okay, here's what I'm going to grab. I wasn't going to do this. I had a plan. I had a plan. This happens to me all the time, you guys. I had a plan to use um, some pearl paints. This was my plan, was to do a light blue pearl paint on here, but I have since changed my mind, and I think that I'm going to use my watercolors on this mixed media paper. So let me grab, let me grab my craft mat because it's going to get wet. So let's grab my craft mat so I can put my paper down on my craft mat. Hey, Kathy in Florida. Hi, Dixie. We're going to first prep this with some really pretty pastel -y colors. Um, so I'm going to grab, now listen, you don't, you can use whatever paint brushes you want. This is a pearl um, paint set. It's in my Amazon store. I love it because it has an iridescence to it that I'll be able to, I think, show you when I start using it. I wanted this to be a pearl paint and I wanted it to be a really light color. Um, and the only color I had was a little darker than I wanted. So I'm gonna just use my watercolors. I haven't used them in a while, so let's do it. So these are watercolor pens, paintbrushes. I don't know what you actually call them. What is, this one's from Stampin' Up. This one is old, 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 and it's called a Stampin' Up Aqua Painter. Um, but you can get these at the craft store. They, they unscrew 
you put water in the barrel and I, you guys, I usually do this cause I always have my bottle of water in, in here, a couple of squirts of water from my water bottle in the barrel. And then what you can do is just squeeze this and the water comes out the bristles. So watch when I squeeze, I'll do it over my little water can here. I'm going to squeeze it and you'll see the water. See it dripping? And I did not even have to apply that much pressure, but you can get these at the craft store. They're really handy. I do use them a lot. And they do come with different types of tips. Um, like this one is a wide flat tip. And actually this would be better for me to use tonight to do this big section. So let me use this one and I'll keep this one on reserve. Um, so you can get them with a flat tip. You can get them with a pointy tip. Totally up to you. Um, and you don't always have to fill the barrel. You can just dip it in water. You can just use regular water and dip it in water. This one I'm having trouble unscrewing this to get it off. Let me try one more time with my little squeegee thing. Hi, Jana. And Connie's here from California. Oh, you're from Devil's Lake? Connie, that's wild. That's just wild. Um, you can get them at Hobby Lobby and Michael's. You can just get these. You can get them in my Amazon store. You can get them off Amazon. So they're in my Amazon store. This one, I'm having trouble getting the barrel off. So I'm just going to, and you don't, you guys, you don't have to have these. You can use a regular old paintbrush. Dip it into your water. What I usually do with my watercolors is spray the colors that you want to use because they'll dry again. Um, you could spray your surface if you want. I'm using a mixed media paper. And I actually was going to do a metallic silver paint on the top, but I don't know. Maybe this is a pearl set, so let's see if we can get a metallic silver out of this. Yeah, we can. This I'm going to use the metallic gray, and we're just going to, it's going to be watercolory. <laughs> Watery colory. I love watercolors. Do you guys ever use them? Hello, Lisa in California. Janet's here from Southeast Michigan. Have you guys ever used watercolors? Are you a watercolor fan? Tell me. I'm not, you know, I'm by no means like, I like to play with them. Let me just put it that way. I'm not a professional. I don't really, I bought a couple of sets that I like to play with. And tonight I was just thinking, why not? I'm probably going to stencil on top with acrylics. But to get a pretty base on this, I'm going to use watercolor. I really love you guys. The more water you use, the lighter your color is going to be. You can go back in and get more pigment from your, your um, pan and add like a deeper color, right? So I can come in and add more color. But what I do find really fun is um, using your, your dryer to blow on this and to get movement. Now, I'm not going to do that on the top because I want this to just be silver like it's the lid of the mason jar, right? So we're gonna let this dry. I'm gonna rinse this out to get the silver off of it. And the bottom, I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna do some light blues. So in this um, palette, it has, there's a blue here, there's a blue here, there's a blue here, there's a blue here. So I have lots of different shades of blue to pick from. And here's a white, so if you wanna lighten anything, you can add white, but I think I'm gonna stick with the blues. So I'm gonna start with this light blue up here. It doesn't even look like I've ever used it, and it looks actually a little blue-green, and I'm just gonna color the whole darn thing. I just wanna color the whole darn thing, and I'm gonna bring in some other colors besides. So you can use whatever brush you want. You don't have to have those watercolor brushes. I just thought it would be fun to show you. This actually looks a little blue-green. Not even so much blue, but it's okay. These are my, I have a few different watercolors um, sets, and this one's my favorite because it's pearl. It's got a pearl luminescence to it, which if you know me, you, you know I love some shimmer, right? So here we got one line of that color. Let's just for the heck of it, let's bring in some of this darker blue. See what you can do? You can just play. I love it. It's so fun, you guys. So, so fun. You can dip into whatever colors you want and blend them and play with them. Thanks, Brenda. Hi, Sue in Illinois. Sheila says, I've never used them. Listen, I'm no, like, I'm no professional at it for sure. 
Um, they're not that expensive. You can get like some inexpensive watercolors. Um, and I love blending colors. So for me, it's really super relaxing to blend colors. And I love a watercolor background. I love a watercolor background. So I'm going into a brand new blue here. I'm just pulling all of the blues and putting them on here. Do you guys see these marks on here? Hold on, I'm gonna pick this up for a minute. See those marks on there? Those are my pencil marks. I was making sure that the stencil that I wanna use is gonna fit on this paper. So that's what you're seeing there. I re-wet my brush. Now, there's a blue I haven't touched yet and it's a bit brighter than all the other ones. So let's grab some of that and see what it does on here. Um, I'm hoping you guys can see this without too much of a shadow. My lighting isn't great in this room. Oh, this is the brightest one. I need more water, but... Or it's actually the darkest one, I should say. I'm going to pull it up in, in this project a little bit. So I've got four different blue colors on here. One's a little more violet. One's a little more green. It's just fun, you guys. It is just fun to play. So I am always encouraging um, folks who tune in and watch my lives. I go live on my page, The Comfy Nest with Grace, every Tuesday night, late night crafting at 9 p.m. Um, this Saturday, I actually have, I'm starting a new series called Guest in the Nest. And I have a guest who's going to craft alongside me on Saturday on my page. So that's something new coming up. Um, but I always encourage when you guys are tuning in and watching, I always encourage you if you're crafty and creative, whether you're just starting or you've been doing it for a long time, I want to encourage you just be free with it. Just like be free little bird. <laughs> just, just get your paints and your brushes out and your clays and your markers and your crayons and like really seriously, just literally have some fun with it. Now I've got all these colors down. I want to blend them a little more now that I've got the color down. So I can grab some more water and lighten some parts of it. I can grab some more pigment and darken other parts, but I really want to work on blending these a little more. So I'm just coming in. I'm going to try to blend these colors a bit more. And every time you wet one of these, it kind of reactivates them. See that? How you can move the paint around a little bit. I can take some of this dark blue that's down here and move it up here into some streaks. Oh, watercolors are so fun to play with. So, so fun. I don't have a ton of experience with them, guys, but they just are fun. I think I want some more of this purple in here. It's like a purpley blue. Which one was that that I grabbed? It must have been this one right here. It's more like a violet blue. So I'm going to grab some more of that and streak it in toward on the bottom. Now we're going to dry this completely and then I think I'm going to do acrylic paint for the stenciling on top of it. And I said to you it is really fun to um, pull in your hair dryer and let it blow the paint around. So let's grab, let me grab this really dark blue and just I'm just going to put it marks of it. I'm not really going to put, I'm not going to spread it out, but I'm just going to put a pool of it right here. And I'm going to put a little pool of it in a couple of different places on here. We're just going to play and we're going to push it around with the air from the hairdryer and it's going to make swirly whirly marks. <laughs> I'm so fancy, aren't I, with my technical terms. Now this one I'm pulling a little green, a little of that darker blue. My swirly whirly marks, that's what I'm gonna call them, girls. All right, watch what happens, it's really fun to play. So we can use, the higher the temperature, the more it's, or the higher the um, air strength, the more it's gonna move. Ooh, my sign's even moving. Right? You can make it drippy. It actually would make more sense to have it drip that way if it's a mason jar. Not enough movement. Add a spritz of water. <laughs> That's all. 
and get it to roll. See that, how fun that is? Oh, I love playing. I'm gonna add a spritz of water right here to make this move a little bit more. And right here, I want that. I want that to budge a little bit so that just you don't even it's better to have a fine mister but that one is in my laundry room I have a fine sprayer but it's it's not here so we're working with what we got and I'm gonna let it roll right off the edge of this project and we'll clean that up later isn't that fun and interesting you can make such interesting things I actually want a little more movement from up here down so I think I'm going to add a little more paint here. And for this gob of paint that's coming down here, I'm just going to dab it so I don't have a big gob looking on the bottom there. That I gob, you know, like all my fancy words, splishy, splashy, gobs. <laughs> Jackie, it, right? It's so fun to watch. It's so fun to do. It's completely relaxing. And I'll tell you, I'm working on mixed media paper. So I'm working on mixed media paper, girls. I use these books all the time. Um, you can buy these books with watercolor paper. The paper inside is thicker, so it handles the water better, okay? Mixed media can be used with acrylics, watercolors, pens, and pencils, this paper. But if you're going to do a lot of watercolor, just pay the little bit extra and get yourself watercolor paper because it is thicker and it will handle it better and it will, it, it's going to like, you see how when I'm picking it up because it's wet, it's it's even moving even more. Um, if you want it to be more like a board, it, then get the watercolor paper. You can buy a like um, like our acrylic panels. You can buy those as watercolor panels. I've I haven't bought them because they're expensive. I and I don't do it often enough, so I just use my papers. I just use my papers. I'm gonna add a little more. Oh, the light just got really bad right there. Let me see if I can adjust that for you guys. Let's try. There we go. That's better. I'm gonna add a little more color up in here. Um, so let me grab my brush again. And I don't know. Should I introduce a new color? Hi, Deborah. Me too, Christina. Me too. It's so fun, Don. It's so fun and relaxing. Oh, thanks, Robbie. That's so that just makes my heart swell. Thanks for saying that. Hi, Jackie. <laughs> we love a little wonky, right, Brenda? I don't I definitely am not the professional um like <laughs> highly educated artist. I'm the play. I'm going to play. I'm going to test. I'm going to experiment and share it with you. So if you're down with that, <laughs> join me. Yeah, Christina, try it. It's so fun. I think I'm going to introduce, so this was, this color here is the silver from in here. This is the one that I used for the top. This one's a little darker, and I'm going to dare, I'm just going to experiment here, and I'm going to grab some of that. Oh, I still have blue on my, on my paintbrush, but it's like a darker gray. I'm going to add a splash of that. I know I don't want to ruin it, but I, I want to experiment. So I'm going to add a bit of that in here and like try to make it look like an old aged jar. Do you have any old aged mason jars in your life? Hey, listen, I posted on the Comfy Nest page today. I found this really beautiful set of mason jars that somebody had created on Pinterest um, and I shared it on my page and I gave her credit because they're beautiful. She has an Etsy shop and you can buy them. I think she actually teaches workshops too. But anyway, the question was, do you still craft and create with mason jars? Do you do it? Can you answer that question here? Because I'm curious. I seriously am polling people. Do you still like to create and craft with mason jars? I'm wondering. Because I wonder if they're like in like... They're gone, like people don't use them anymore. Or are you still using them? I don't know why I wanted the dark, but I do. So I'm adding it in there and I'm gonna push it around. I'm gonna get boxy and push it around. I want this, this black right here, I want it to go that way. So I'm gonna spray and then I'm gonna push it that way. <laughs> there we go. That's wacky. That's a little wacky. It pulls on the bottom. It's like standing on the lip of my page and I don't want that. So I'm gonna just take 
my rag and dab that off. And I'm going to add a little black because a, a little more of this dark gray because I actually, what do you think of it? I like it. I think it's kind of cool. <laughs> You're welcome, Jenna. <laughs> yeah, you can count on me to be wonky with my words. Um, uh, Juanita says, no, I, she doesn't use mason jars and she hasn't used them yet. And still uses them. Antique mason jars for weddings. Ooh, Betsy, that sounds so nice. Lola says she still likes creating with mason jars. I'm grabbing some more of that dark color, ladies, and I'm going to add, because I do kind of like it, I think I'm going to add it normally here where the, the lid would be and then you have the glass part of the jar, like that transition place. Normally, I would do this with like black, like a marker or a gel pen or something like that, but I'm going to come in, since I have this color already incorporated in the jar, I'm gonna come in a little bit with that black and just add it up here as the line. And I'm gonna add a little bit, this is this is dry already. So I'm gonna add a little bit of this color to the lid like it got rusty or like patina it a little bit. And I know this isn't the right patina color, but we're just pretending. This is my dark rusty color that I'm adding here. And I think I need to be a little more bold about it. Let's just add a couple of blobs of dark there and push it around. I'm going to get bossy and push it around now. <laughs> I'm going to bully it around on here. Oh, if I say that word, I don't want to get kicked into Facebook jail. I shouldn't have said that word, B-U-L-L-Y. I was like trying to be funny. I'm bossing around this paper and the, the paints, but I, didn't, I don't want to get flagged for anything nasty. So I apologize. These are, they're not really moving. My my base, my paper here is dry, so it's that, that paint is just not moving very much. So a little spritz of water will get it activated. I want it to, to just move around. There we go. There we go. All right. It's interesting. It's interesting to say the least. A little more black right here. It's, it's, I don't think it's really black. It's like a steel gray or something. But I'm gonna add a bit of it here and then spray it to get that to move. And then I'm gonna be done with this part because we gotta get ready to stencil. I have never stenciled with watercolor, so I'm not gonna attempt that. I'm gonna use my, um, my acrylics. Oh, look at that pretty. Look at that movement right there, you guys. Ooh, so pretty. You guys, I just find this like super relaxing and super fun. So thank you for being here for this like experimental journey. I, you know, I've played with watercolors before, but I don't do it that often. Now, if I'm ready for this to dry and I love like the movement of what I got going on here, you can just let it air dry the way it is, but if you want to speed it up, I'm gonna grab, I got these shop towels. They're like supposed to be like those blue shop towels, but they were cheaper, so I got them. Um, these were my Amazon store too, because I figured somebody's gonna ask me. I'm just gonna dab. See that? I'm just trying to dab that to speed this dry process up a little bit, because it's gonna absorb the extra moisture that we don't need on here so that we can start stenciling. And we can also use our dryer. But I'm gonna dab up some of that excess. And actually, this would make a really cool background for something. I'm not gonna throw that out, because in multimedia, mixed media, I mean, in mixed media projects, I could use this for a background for something. But really what I'm trying to do is just absorb some of that excess so that we can start working with this. Now, you'll notice, look at how wrinkly my paper is. It's paper and it got wet, so it's gotten very wrinkly. It Multimedia paper can handle watercolors, but like I said, you're better off with watercolor paper. I just don't, the, the, I'll show you. I have just a bit of watercolor paper that came with one of my sets. Um, I just got a bit of it and it's really small, but I'll show you how thick it is like in comparison, it's it's pretty thick and it's kind of like it has a texture to it. This is watercolor paper. Ooh, why is the lighting so ick? There we go, that's better. 
it does have a texture to it so it like has grooves and it just uh, it accepts the water so much better so just fyi i'm i should i wish i had watercolor paper but i don't so we're working with what we got Ooh, good idea mary hi julie me too jackie <laughs> jackie says i'm so curious how this is going to turn out me too girlfriend <laughs> Me too. Listen, if you are catching the replay, I forgot to mention, um, Essential Stencil is going to give away another set. They'll give away three sets of stencils tonight live when I'm done with the project, but they'll also give another set for a replay watcher. So if you're catching the replay, make sure you comment replay, and within 24 hours, they're going to pick another winner. How fun is that? All right, here we go. It's still wet. We're going to dry it. I'm going to add some heat. I think I'm going to put my watercolors away. Woo, my, everything's blowing all over the place. So what I want to show you, that's pretty dry. It's wrinkly, but it's pretty dry. Thank you, Barbara. It's kind of unusual. So see that sheen, you guys? That is a pearly watercolor paint it has uh like a pearly sheen to it it's a little shimmery and i love it i love it love it i got it off amazon and like i said that paint set is in my store on amazon if you want it you can let me know it's just amazon.com slash shop slash the comfy nest is basically how you find it okay i was making marks on here with pencil because i wanted to figure out how i was going to fit this on here and I can I can do it I promise you here right here this little mark that you see right there that little pencil mark that is the bottom of the L in the word well so I'm gonna put I'm gonna stack the words in four stacks well is gonna end up right there so I actually I'm gonna start with that word because I marked that off and the pencil mark is still showing right there so I'm gonna start with the word well I'm gonna put it above it and the rest of it's going below. So it's gonna work just fine. Now, um, I wanna check for being straight, which I wanna make sure my stencil is straight. You could use, you could use some um, painter's tape. I don't normally, and I'll tell you what, on this watercolored paper now, it's watercolored, you know, it's paper that now has watercolor on it. I'm not hugely interested in putting my tape on the paper. So I'm just, if you want to tape, you could still tape and just tape it down like really close to it to like make it a little more snug and on your project so that nothing budges, right? Because if you're worried about it budging, I normally don't even do that because I, I don't know, I'm just lazy and that's just the way I roll. Um, I have some tin foil. I got some tin foil here and I always reuse. I reuse, I reuse. So we got our tin foil here. And I'm going to use, it's just a dark gray, which is gonna mimic the silver and that black that's kind of running through there. It is interesting, isn't it, Diane? Listen, I wanna encourage you guys to like really just have fun with your stuff. Don't, don't take it too seriously. Um, don't, oh, I just moved my thing. Don't take it too seriously. Don't worry so much about the outcome um, in the sense that if you worry about everything being like perfect and fitting in the lines, it's really hard to just be like super free and creative with your projects. That's my thought. Um, so it's okay to go outside the lines. Like, look at this paint job. It looks so messy, but I love it. I think it's like super cool. And I, I hope you, I hope you enjoy it too. Okay. A little bit of paint. I'm going to grab the smallest of the essential brushes. Let me find it. I think it's this one, the essential stencil brushes. You could use two. Actually, it might be easier for me to use a wedge with this, uh, like a makeup wedge. Let me grab one of those because my, my paper itself is really crinkly now. 
So I might have a, a better, easier job um, pouncing the paint onto the paper now. So I'm using regular acrylic paint. It is just apple barrel acrylic paint. I picked it because of the color. I actually don't prefer. I would prefer not to use apple barrel for stenciling because it's one of the thinnest paints I own, but I went with the color. Okay, here's what I say to you. You're gonna come in and you're gonna load your brush or load your makeup wedge, but you want it to look dry. You don't wanna have anything wet or glistening or drippy on here. That's number one. My, my jar, the paper underneath is really crinkly. So it's causing the stencil to be raised up off of the paper. So I'm gonna use my left hand and I'm gonna use two fingers on my left hand to push down on the L while I pounce this paint over it. See that? So I'm making sure to push down all of the edges of that letter. Now I'm gonna to move to the next L and very gently I'm pouncing it up and down. Move into the E and I'm pushing down to make sure that it's as um, solidly down on the surface as possible. Now listen, don't, don't get yourself all in a tizzy over top, girls and guys, guys and gals. This is supposed to be fun and free and creative and exciting. Like you want to be like surprised by how it turns out and the big reveal when you take the stencil off, it's like, oh my gosh, I love the way, you know, you get excited about it. So don't be too hard on yourself if things don't go perfectly. Just enjoy it. Just relax and enjoy it. Okay. I think I got it done. I'm gonna I'm gonna hinge it back. I'm gonna hold it down strongly with this hand, both my paper and the stencil. I'm gonna peel back my tape here and we're gonna peel it back. And it's great. I have a teeny bit of bleed through right on the L, but with all the wish-washiness of the what's underneath it, I don't think it's an issue at all. Because <laughs> the other part of it is by nature very messy looking. So that's what we got so far. Look at that sheen. Woo hoo hoo! So fun. All right, that needs to be dry before, and this needs to be dry before I put this back down again. So I'm gonna take some air to it. How are you fitting this all on the jar? <laughs> Sandy, I worked it out before I got started. So what I normally do, this is, um, this is the part that I'm gluing down. So I'm gonna write on it and show you. So what I normally do, like I know I'm, I'm not gonna put any stenciling on the lid, so I mark that off. And then I come in and I usually start in the middle, right? And so this is what I did earlier. Like I marked off my W, that's the furthest out, furthest up, furthest down, furthest up, furthest down. So my this word well would start here and it would end there. And now I have my marks, do you see them? I have my L, I have part of my W there. So now I know that will fit there. I know, I can just see it, I don't even have to mark it off, but I know that it is, is gonna fit here. I just know, I can see it, but I can mark off the edges of it. And then with my, I did this earlier, marked off the edge of the W, and, and I'm a little bit too far to the left, so I gotta move over to the, to, I was too far to the right, I need to move over this way. But I take the highest and the outer, highest, lowest, and the outermost points, and I just mark them off with my pencil. So I know where they're gonna land, like the end of my M. I'm doing more than I usually do, but just for the sake of showing you. So there's the beginning and the end of that word. And then I can put soul, because that's with my, and then soul is the only thing left. So I know, and, and the more you do this, the more you etch this stuff out, the more you're gonna start to, like you don't have to do the, whole, I used to do the whole thing. Then I realized I don't need to do the whole thing. I, I need to know if the beginning and the end, if it's all gonna fit. So there's the S and the L of the word soul. So it's gonna fit, I'm gonna stack it in four different lines. Um, 
before you do this process with a regular pencil, obviously you want to do it before you put your background on, right? You're going to make your markings before you paint your background or collage your background or whatever you're going to do on it. Um, I did that on here already and the pencil marks are showing through. You can see my W is showing through right there. My pencil marks for my W because I did this earlier. There's the end of my Y on my... There's the rest of my L. So I already put little marks and those are just my little clues. Does that make sense, Sandy? Yeah, it will. Joyce, the more you do it, the easier it gets for you. Um, but it, it's really helpful to me because I'm really visual to put those little pencil marks to give myself a guide before I get started. Um, and then I eyeball it. Like I didn't give myself like a, a, a horizontal line to put these words, I just eyeball it, you guys. And that's what I'm saying to you about, like, don't, don't take it too seriously. Don't get yourself really worked up about it. It, it. it takes the fun out of it. It takes the joy out of it if you, if you do that to yourself. So just try to enjoy it. Okay, we just have to do, the only thing we need to do is it is. Well is already on there, so I need it is. Those are the two words that I need to mark down on here. Um, you're welcome, Dink. It's so much easier. And if you, like here, I actually was gonna paint this background in, in watercolor paints. Changed my mind last minute to go, I mean, in acrylic paints, but I changed my mind last minute to go to watercolors. Now, the pencil marks are showing through the watercolors. So you can use chalk or chalk pencils, because they will erase easily to do your markings. Um, there are erasable pens that quilters use um, to mark their fabrics. So you could get creative and find some of those tools if you wanted to, but just you just wanna make sure that you mark before you paint your background. That way, whatever your markings are will get covered with your paint. I have entirely too much paint. <laughs> on my sponge, I can see it because it bubbled up a little bit. So I may get a little bleed through right there. But we forge on, <laughs> we're not gonna worry about it. We're gonna, it all is well with my soul. So I'm just gonna keep on stenciling. Now what'll be interesting, I did, like I said, my, my intention was to add, put acrylic paint down on here, not watercolor and the watercolor paint paint and water really wrinkled up this paper so it, I'll be curious to see how it paints how it glues down on that on that um that board that Dollar Tree board we'll see I don't know what's going to happen there <laughs> yes thank you Christina for explaining that sprinkling means well I just dropped the stencil sprinkling means to hit that button and um, Facebook doesn't want us asking you to share so they don't want us using that word so a lot of folks use the word you know will you sprinkle this out and get it out to other people okay i'm going to try to get my letters lined up with the markings that i made earlier it's um it's a little challenging to see there's going to be a space in between that i um it's bigger than i was thinking it would be, but it, it's all right. It's, it's all right. It's going to be fine. We're going to run with it. I don't think I'm just going to, I'm going to just see something here. Call me crazy. I'm just curious to see if I try to erase this. Nope. The, the watercolor paint has saturated, so I cannot erase my pencil marks. Oh, I can erase the watercolor paint though. Now I'm just curious. It's erasing the watercolor paint. I, I suppose if I d kept doing it, I would get a complete white mark. I'm just going to have to go with it because my Y is a little bit closer to the edge than I'd like it, but it's okay. It's all right. I was so excited to watercolor um, that I didn't even think about trying to erase those marks before I started. It's okay. I'm telling you, on the true exhibit of just don't let it get you down. Don't let it like throw you for such a loop that you give up. Just 
keep running with it and enjoy the process. If they don't let it take the joy out of it for you if something doesn't go the way you planned. Because you know what? Sometimes you have happy accidents too. Like a lot of times I'll make a mistake and I'm like, you know what? I made a mistake, but I actually quite like it. So just give it a chance. Hi there, kiddo. Hello. Did they win? Um, no, they didn't. But oh. Hudson got. Did Hudson have a good match? Yeah, Hudson won. Good. It's our grueling two and a half rounds. Really? Yep. Oh, did you get to see him at all? Yeah. Yeah. I'm he glad. knocks afterwards. Oh, good. Cheesed. Good. I'm glad. You're a good friend to go watch him wrestle. Um, that was my 15-year-old guy. My, senior, my uh, freshman in high school went to see his friend who is on the varsity wrestling team. Um, this must be his second or third wrestling match. And so he went to support his friend with his dad. They, both, the way, they just got back from the game. So that's... The little report you were just hearing was a Kurtz family report on how <laughs> how the team did, how Hudson, his friend, did. All right. Gently, just up and down. My Y, this little bit of Y is going right off the edge. It's all right. No one's going to know the difference. So it's closer to the edge than I should have made it, but it's okay. It's, like I said... It's still going to be just fine. If anybody didn't see the stencil, if I didn't tell you that, you probably wouldn't even realize it. Okay, so, so far, see how close to the edge it is? It went right off the edge. I could have moved that over a little bit, but it's okay. And now sole is just going to nestle right in the bottom of the jar here. Really sweet, I think. Sweetly. All right, let me dry this quick before I do that. I'm using a gray, I don't know, let's see, it's called Pewter Gray by Apple Barrel <laughs> in a messy jar. <laughs> Pewter Gray. Okay, uh, my S is well marked out on here, so I'm kind of like, because of my pencil marks are coming right through my watercolor paints, I'm kind of bound by what I stetched out, sketched out earlier. Um, so again, the sketchings really help, can really help you to know where to put things and whether they'll fit. Just think through, like, do I need to um, do this before I put my paint down so that, and what kind of paint am I using? What color am I using? Is it going to be covered? If not, you might, you might sketch it out and then erase your marks before you put your paint down because otherwise you're get, you might get these marks that I can't erase them and now I'm bound. I have to put these letters where I sketch them because I need to cover up those pencil marks on this, especially this water, these very pastel colored, pearly watercolors. Um, the, the pencil marks are really obvious. If you were putting a dark gray down, it wouldn't matter. Like if, if your background was dark gray, it wouldn't matter. But I went with a really soft color scheme with those watercolor paints. Alrighty, now I hadn't decided yet. I'm like, I really am. Um, I knew I wanted the stencil. I knew I wanted the mason jar. I was gonna do acrylic paints, decided on the watercolors. Now that really changes the whole look of what I was doing. So I don't know, like we just have to decide what to do here. Oh, I definitely got bleed through there, but it's okay. All right, it all fits beautifully. And I actually, uh, when I started thinking this through, my thought was that I would embellish, like put a floral here or something, like a paper flower or something, and then tie some rope around it. Um, I was gonna tie some jute and put a bow. You tell me, what are your thoughts? Because now, listen, I have to, I have to, we have to glue this down on here. We're gonna glue this down on here to give it some form. And then I'll have to clean up the edges, right? So th this is gonna be interesting because I used watercolor, my paper got really wrinkled. Now, and if I had the time, I would be tempted to put some parchment paper over this and use my dry clothing iron 
to try to straighten these out or put it underneath something like really flat and heavy overnight to just get this to flatten out a little bit. I don't have that time with you guys because of the live, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna make this work. We're gonna glue this down. And I think I will use, I'm gonna think through, I don't think I wanna use matte Mod Podge. I think I'm gonna use my gel medium because I'm going to use this as a glue because it's not really a liquid. It's like a paste, so it's thick. And I will be able to apply it with my palette knife and I will be able to get it through like this is a burlap right here this is a burlap that i i thought about ripping off actually oh it, it does come off yeah I, I could use this for something else because that's how i roll that's a piece of burlap and i want to make sure that my glue is that this paper is going to adhere down um so look at that it came right off um that so there's still some residual glue here from the burlap and I have all this glitter, right? And I want to make sure that I can put a thick enough coat of glue down so that this is gonna lay flat. The reason I won't use my glue gun is because if I use my glue gun, I'm gonna have all those stringy lines of glue gun. That's not flat, and that will show through my paper. So I'm going to use this gel medium that looks like that, okay? And I'm gonna spread it all over this and it's nice because it's going to like move around the nooks and crannies of the glue that are residual on here but it's going to stay in place and actually to be truthful with you i think it's better for me to brush this on so i'm going to use my palette knife to get it out of the jar and then let's brush it because i want to get in all those nooks and crannies and i think i'll have an easier time with a brush I'm looking for one of these because it's bigger. Yeah, I want to have a nice flat, but thick enough that it's going to hit all of these nooks and crannies of the, like there's raised up glue in a um, random pattern. And then I have this pattern. I want to cover that up and I want the glue to move around the glitter so that my paper sits nicely. Does that make sense? I feel like I'm not making much sense, but if I use Mod Podge, it's really thin and it's just gonna smear too thin. And if I use my glue gun, that's too thick and it's gonna show me lines of glue gun and I don't want that. This goes on like a paste and it's called matte medium and you can use it as a glue for your projects. And it's really sturdy as a glue for your projects. Down here, it's nice and smooth. So I don't know if I'm worried so much about down here, but up here where I have all that stuff going on, I'm a little worried that the that Mod Podge just isn't gonna be thick enough. So let's see how this works. <laughs> let's see. Oh, thanks, Henny Rose. Sprinkled four times. Thank you, Lisa. I feel like I'm struggling here to give you that description. All right, let's see how straight we can get this. Now, listen, don't get too worked up over this either because you're going to put it down. The glue, this isn't like hot glue, and it's not like Mod Podge. It's thick, so um, it, gives, it, it, it takes a little longer to dry. So, like, I'm way over on this side, and I'm short on this side. I'm just going to pick it back up, and I'm going to put it back down. Like, don't... This gives you, it has a longer dry time, so you're going to have more time. I think I need to pick it up, girls, because I can't really see what I'm doing. I'm short, and so this table is too big for me, and I'm trying to reach over and see everything. I am definitely cut my paper bigger than the board, um, but it's, it's going to work. It'll be fine. I'm going to take my brayer. It's going to help me push my paper into that glue. Okay, I don't, I'm not worried about... A ripple here and there listen it's a Dollar Tree board and a piece of paper <laughs> like I try to keep it in perspective like really girls I'm not selling it at the Museum of Art <laughs> this is gonna go somewhere in my house I'm missing a little glue here imagine that or Lindsay and Christina still here I always miss something with my glue it's just 
it's just what I do. Seems to be just what I do. It's like I always drop things after midnight in my craft room when everybody's asleep. My husband comes rushing in. I thought you fell. No, I just dropped my hair dryer on the floor. Like, why do I wait until everybody's asleep to drop things? I don't know. It's just the way things go with Grace Kurtz. It's just the Grace Kurtz way. All right. Needing more glue. Using my brayer. Pushing it down on all the edges. Giving it a chance to really adhere. And we're not going to worry. I have bubbles. I will show them to you to prove it. I have bubbles. I got bubbles. Do you? It's okay. It's okay. It's, it's watercolor. It's got movement. It's got, like, I want it to look like it has texture. Um, I'm going to add some jute, probably, and maybe a ribbon, and maybe a paper flower. So we're not going for perfect here. We're just going for pretty. We're not going for perfect. We're just going for pretty. Yeah, I woke him up the other night, Joyce. He came in and he said, Ma, I was asleep. What happened? I said, oh. At the, the other night, my step stool fell. I have a little step stool here because I'm short and I can't reach everything. All right. It's on there. I have one big, like, bubble line right there. Can you see that? But listen, if I can't get it down... I'm not going to worry about it because it kind of runs in the same lines that all of these watercolor lines run. All of the veins of the drippy watercolor lines. So something like that just, it's going down when I push on it. But it, 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 if you miss it and it's still there, what I would say to you is please don't focus on those things like that. Don't focus on that. When you look at a piece that you finished, Focus on the accomplishment, focus on the pretty, focus on the colors that you love. Like, why does it bring you joy? Don't focus on the little bottle. Don't, don't, don't do that to yourself. It'll just take the fun out of it. So, use your brayer if you have one. Use your fingers. You can use a credit card, like an old credit card. You can use anything that's stiff. Just don't rip your paper. It has, you know, actually, it would be better if it was something rubbery, like, um, like a silicone tool. But... Just don't worry about it about too much. Now look at, I'm over the edges with my paper by quite a bit there. So what options do we have for this? What do you think? I know what I'm gonna do. I'm going to use my sandpaper. You could, if you didn't wanna have sanded like roughed edges, you could lay it down flat and use your X-Acto knife or your rotary cutter to cut that off. But I am going to take sandpaper and I'm going to pull down at an angle on that edge to try to rip that paper. Now this paper though, it is thicker, you guys. It's mi mixed media paper. It's, so it's a little thicker. When I pull down on it, it's gonna pull away the blue watercolor paint and it's going to reveal the white paper. I'll show you what I mean. So I may have places where I see some white paper. Um, so we'll talk about that here in a minute too. But it, this board, my paper's already glued down on there. You want to make sure that it's dry, which this paper is absorbing the thick glue better. It doesn't feel as wet as say a Mod Podge would. You want to come down at an angle, ripping the paper, and it will rip. It will rip. It'll all come off, and you'll have that nice, clean edge that you want. Okay? So it just takes a minute. Just take your time. Watch your, ha your Hallmark movies. Drink your tea. <laughs> Listen to the kids play on the floor while you're crafting, and just don't, don't rush it your time if you're having trouble like this is really coarse if you're having trouble with it maybe grab a different grit of paper maybe your paper is too fine and, uh, and a coarser grit would help I gotta go all the way around girls because I cut it big and I cut it big because I'd rather it be big and pull this off than to be too small and then, then what do you do? Then you have like this fall scene in the background on the Dollar Tree board showing up and I didn't want that. 
I'd rather have it be a little bit big. Let's see what comments you guys have. Yeah, it would. Madeline says if you put it on the edge and you do this, it will hold sturdier. True, but I'm trying to demonstrate for you guys. So I'm trying to show you in the in the camera that you wouldn't be able to see it so well from over there. So see, it's going to give me a bit of a white edge in places like right here. You can see a bit of a white edge right there. So you have a couple of options. You can leave it white. I think the white actually looks really nice on this project because I have a pearl um, like bluish. It reminds me of the sea and it reminds me of sea glass, actually the color of the mason jar. So I'm good with the white, but you could take your distress pad or some dark paint and you could just darken up the edges if you wanted it to look more vintagey and you wanted to darken them up. But I don't think I'm going to do that on here because I'm liking the white look of the paper the distressed paper. I'm, I'm actually liking it, which I know is unusual. You guys, I'm working up a sweat. Girlfriend, I'm, and that tells you a little bit about how, how much of, um, like how good a shape I'm in or not, right? That I'm actually working up a sweat doing this. <laughs> Get my workout in. All right, here we go. We're almost done. I've got this little corner. All right. So there we go. Now, whoops, we got that little edge. Now I have, I could, you know, be a little more careful about those corners, but for the sake of time, basically it whitened out my edges just a little bit. Like you, cause you can see the white inside of the paper, but I like it because I think it's really bright and pretty. Um, I'm going to put my glue away because I don't need any more of that. I'm clearly done with the glue. So let me get my brush and water. Let me get my, that as much of that back in the jar as you can because it's this stuff isn't cheap necessarily, but it works really good. It's really, I think, a really good investment. Um, and actually, I bought the little jar. It's, how many ounces? Eight ounces. And because I wasn't sure if I was going to like it. The next time I buy matte gel, I'll buy a bigger jar, like a 16 ounce jar, because I really do like it. And you know, as I get older, I get less chintzy with my supplies. <laughs> All right, you guys, the stencil that I used, if you want to know, this is the stencil set that I used. You can go out and use my code, the Comfy Nest, to get 10% off this stencil or any stencil that you want to create a project like this one. Here's what we got so far. I want to embellish it a little bit and I have to recreate those little holes, I think, so that I can, we can hang it. But let's get, my original intention, you guys, was to put, it's a mason jar. So I was gonna do the jute with um, maybe a, a satin ribbon in one of the blue colors. So I'm just gonna see what would this look like if we wrapped, I'm not gonna cover the whole lid. I just wanna cover this transition between the lid and the glass of this mason jar. I'm feeling like if I had some Amanda, some of Amanda's shells from her shell business that they would be really cool on here. And actually, I, I, I kind of wanted a bow. So I'm gonna flip this, you guys. I'm gonna spin it if I can. No, nope, I'm gonna have to start all over again. Hang tight, I just tied it too tight to spin it. Hold on. I'm going to make sure that it's that it ends, that the, the tail, I usually make it end in the back, but I'm going to have it end in the front and over here so I can have a little bow up here in this space that, that where there's nothing, where I was thinking about put that paper flower. Let's put our jute rope so that I can put a bow right there. So I want this extra tail right here so I can tie a bow. Let's give myself a little more just in case. And I'm going to wrap this a couple of times to embellish this a little add. So this is adding texture. It gives like a little textural element to it, right? So now here on this right side, I can create a little bow. And sometimes I like to do a double bow. I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. I do two bunny ears. That's how I learned to tie my shoes. And when I was in first grade, my brother taught me that. He was in college. I was in first grade. And it's the only way I've ever known to tie my shoes. So go ahead and giggle at me if you must. 
or maybe you're like me and you do the bunny ears. <laughs> but I do like to do a double bow with these little, um, with the jute rope, because I think it's really sweet and precious. So let me cut this. I may, I want to shorten this one, it's too long. But I'll show you what I mean by that. So it already has one bow, which is super cute. And I may add more, I haven't decided yet. But then to take your extra, create another little bow. There's the bunny ears again. We're gonna create another little bow. And I like to hot glue that. I better get my hot glue gun going because I'm gonna embellish now. I like to hot glue it on top of the other one so it's like fluffier and it has a little more presence, right? So that's what I mean by double bow. So I'm gonna put this aside because I'm gonna use that probably on top of this other one. And in the meantime, let me see about some satin ribbon. What would you, what, what would you guys do to embellish this a little bit? Yeah, Gail, I'm one of 13 kids and I'm the 11th of 13. And Steven, who taught me to tie my shoes, he was the oldest. He was a senior in college, I was in first grade. I love the double bow, Andrea. Yeah, I do the bunny ears. That's the only way I know how. I can't even do it the other way. <laughs> so yeah, I can't. So I'm with your daughter. <laughs> yeah, I just, it's so easy, you guys. One little bow. Let's make it a little more. Oh, and I have some Baker's twine mixed in here. <laughs> Let's make it a little more fluffy. You could do as many layers as you want. But I just, I glue the knot right on top of the other knot or right near it, as close as you can get, and it kind of just doubles everything and makes it fluffier. I suppose you could do it as many times as you want, but I've always just done, when I do it, I do a double bow. But I'm still feeling like, I'm gonna grab a paper flower and just see, because that was my original plan. Hold on, girls. The other idea I had, I just got this stamp that has that big butterfly, so maybe that would be cute too. But I, what I was originally thinking, and these have burlap elements to them, is just to add one of these flowers. Oh, look at the yellow one, you guys. It's got lace on the back. It's got like satin on the front with some sparkle. Oh, it's bright and pretty. It might be too much. It might be too much. I really actually like that one. Let's just... Let's just see what else we have in here. Um, these are from Doris. You're going to ask me, I know. Doris Floral Embellishments. That's all these are. Found them online. All right, let's see. They come with some leaves that have some sparkle, which we love. Oh, maybe we need to add some sparkle with the pearl. So let's do this. Let's add a floral with a couple of leaves. Um, all right, that's it. They're all out now. I was looking for some leaves of different kinds. Like um, Some of them have words on them. Some of them are just plain. And then they are different. Oh, there's one that's not the same color. That matches the jute rope, though. So maybe a couple of little leaves with some gold on them. Hot glued on here. With the double bow. How sweet is that, you guys? Oh, how sweet is that? Okay, I think that's it. I'm gonna glue it down, but um, the other option I thought, if you don't have, like pull out your stuff, guys, and use it. I know so many of you have stamps, and you have stencils, and you have florals, and you have papers, and you have all kinds of stuff. Just just pull them out and use them. If, if I was thinking paper floral, I'm loving the way that worked, but the other alternative was to pull out a stamp, like of a butterfly or a flower, and put it on that corner. But I love the texture that the floral gives. So let's see if my glue is hot enough yet. I'm going to glue down first. Let's glue down this. Uh, are you hot enough yet? Yes, you are just hot enough. Let's put a little bit of glue and... I try not to put my fingers anywhere near there because I've been burned too many times. So I use this little silicone tool to push that down into the glue. And then let's glue down these two florals. And I can be liberal here because the whole floral is going to cover the glue. That is not really hot enough. I mean, I know it looks a little hot, but it's not hot enough. I'm going to put it back on its base. That'll be hot enough to hold that in place. We'll let that heat up for a second more. I'm gonna put away some of my, my 
little pens while we're waiting for that to heat up. Tell me what you guys think. Tell me what you think. I hope you like it. This is the Faith 3 Packs. So it has three phrases in it. I just used one of them, but you could use any of the ones you want. And I hope that it just showed you um, that you can, like... Even though this is a long, skinny stencil, like it goes that way, you don't have to just keep it positioned that way. I just showed you how you can stack it long and skinny the other way, right? So that's what I was hoping to show you tonight. Let's get a good, it's just taking this glue gun a hot minute to warm up. It's not quite warm enough. It's just taking a minute, but I think it's going to be enough to keep this on here. Yes. It will be. The flower really makes it, right, Brenda? It's such a simple little thing, but it really makes it. I'm going to shut that light off and see if that helps with that glare. Oh, Cindy, I'm so glad. Listen, if you guys like what you see here, um, I am launching a craft crate, which is a monthly box that goes straight to your door every month. I'm very excited about it. You're welcome to come on over to the Comfy Nest with Grace and follow my page. Join my free craft community called the Crafty Chicks Club because that's where I'll be announcing that launch and I'll have limited number of boxes for the first couple of months anyway until I figure out what kind of demand there'll be. Um, but I love doing crafty projects and I hope you will enjoy them with me. Now I'm debating about the holes. <laughs> the original Dollar um, Tree project comes with these two holes with the jute rope hanging. Um, so if I were going to poke them, your this Crocodile 2, which is in my, it's by Memory Keepers. We are Memory Keepers. It's called the Crocodile 2. This is the big one. There is a smaller one, um, but this is in my, and both of them are in my Amazon store too, but that will punch through this chipboard um, very easily. You can punch those holes, repunch those holes if you want to, but I am a leaner. <laughs> I will probably put this on my mantle or on a shelf somewhere and lean it up against the wall. I do that quite often, so I haven't decided. So I'll punch the holes later if I need to, but I hope you guys like the project. I hope you like it. Um, I'm sure that Essential Stencil will be pulling three names of winners pretty soon. Um, if you're new to Essential Stencil, we'd love to know that. You can check the description of this this live for um, getting on the text messaging system, which is super helpful. If you're not on Facebook and you want to be reminded of the lies, you just opt into their text messaging and, and every time one of the brand ambassadors goes live here on the page, you'll get a little text message that says, join Grace now, she's doing a live project. Um, so that's really a nice, helpful thing if you like to be like a part of the regulars, the regular um, demos. Add some wire, Maggie says. I was thinking about adding some satin flower or satin ribbon, but now with the floral, I really love it. Um, and yes, you could use wire to hang it. That's true. But look at that watercolor background, guys. It's just interesting. Look at how interesting it is. And because it's pearl watercolors, it has a shimmer to it, which I just think is so soft and pretty. Here are our winners. Here we go. Here we go. Mary Mathis Lonovic, Deborah Boltz, you just won, and Gerilyn Myers. The three of you just won a set of stencils. So congratulations, ladies. In that pinned post is the email address where you're going to email your mailing address and your email address so that they can send you a set. You guys have a beautiful, blessed night. Thanks for joining me. Um, I hope you stay safe and healthy, and I'll catch you next Thursday right here on Essential Stencil. Take care. Bye.